I don't really consider that culturing the Nares alone is sufficient to look for hidden areas of staph, particularly in patients who have problems with the current MRSA infections. Studies done in Europe and the United States indicate that the throat is a common source of MRSA and that the organism can stay there without causing symptoms and ultimately cause MRSA to spread out on the skin and then be the source of recurrent problems. In addition to the throat, intertriginous areas of the skin, warm moist areas, under the armpits, in the gluteal cleft, and areas like that can also harbor MRSA silently. So that culturing just the nose really doesn't reveal all the places where the organism might hide. And if you don't find it in the nose, then the tendency is not to do decolonization. The answer is that an American study showed that 12.5% of those who were harboring MRSA harbored it only in their throat and not in the nares. So not finding it in the nose doesn't mean it's not being carried somewhere as a source of recurrent infections. So that's why it's so important to culture not only the nose, but also the throat and typical endotriginous areas. So to decolonize the throat, one uses a chlorhexidine mouthwash uh, that's commercially available and it should really be done three times a day for a week each week per month for roughly three months if a patient's really had significant problems with recurrent MRSA. I might add that in addition to decolonizing the nares and the throat, it's probably a good idea in patients who've had really severe recurrent MRSA infections to try and decolonize those intertriginous warm moist areas and that requires a bleach bath done probably one or two times a week over the course of about a month. If you add decolonizing the nose, the intertriginous skin, and the throat together, that becomes quite burdensome in point of fact. And it should only be done in those patients who've had significant recurrences of major MRSA infections. I wouldn't do it when someone has a single episode, but if they've had recurrent problems and they've been counseled about proper hygiene and their close personal contacts have been screened and they're still having a problem, that's when I go to full out decolonization. Thank you.